Well, hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another special episode of Dr. Move which is the French version, if you're not hip on that. Move uh, yeah. Move <laughs> And, uh, man, this is going to be a great one because uh, I was saying this before we even started the show, but you kind of get your top tier list of people that you always like to work with. And this guy right here, uh, I was just telling Lee when we started this about his impact of his show that he has, what it had on Hell Ming kind of led to us deciding not to just be another horror podcast. Same deal with what I'm doing right here with Dr. Movie. I pretty much have the freedom to do whatever I want to. And it's really because of listening to Lee Russell and the guys over it. They must be destroyed on sight. They must be destroyed on sight. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should have had my uh, my soundboard up. I could have I could, could have played that right away. But oh, oh well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I was actually when you told me that I was really surprised to hear it because it's like I don't even know who listens to my podcast anymore. I got like a dedicated audience of like maybe 80 to 100 people and hardly anyone. Ever, I'm sure you know this as well as, as you know, just podcasting as a hobby kind of thing. Yeah. You, it's kind of a thankless job, right? Because like no one ever like really reaches out to you necessarily all the time. Like, at least in my experience, like it, very rarely do we get comments or people saying, "Oh, we're big fans" or whatever the hell. So it's like, am I just talking out into the void every month and no one's listening? Or are they? It's just automatically downloading to their iTunes and they never check it, you know? So, right. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean, thank you. Uh, that that. Uh, actually makes me feel good to know that uh, we had some sort of influence on on an excellent show so you know that's even better yeah, there's no doubt about it i mean and i even said you know danny my, my counterpart who is a hard mm -hmm. egg to crack right he he <laughs> he has his opinions and when he said hey i i really like this show you know and it, it was because of the fact of you weren't just stuck in a corner and only can do this type of movie and and that really led to what Helming is, was, going to be, whatever happens with that show. Uh, he's so mm -hmm. busy that it's just hard for us to get together. So this is my little side pet project where I can always do some things. Uh, of course, I always think about you coming on short bus, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you knocked it out of the park <laughs> with Death Sport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did. We did Death Sport, and we did uh, Robo Vampire. Robo Vampire. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> so i mean automatically i just let you know that that lee and i are at least in the same ballpark of we we love a good bad movie mm -hmm. and that's uh true. you know but we we like it all too right so yeah. that's 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 the reason again of, of going through i've been going through this like hicksploitation stuff right all these old okay. redneck car chasing movies and all this stuff there was a whole set of smoking the bandit knockoff movies that i didn't know existed oh yeah there's and, and there's just there's just a ton of like sequels to Smokey and the Bandit, right? There's sure. like TV sequels and stuff like that in the '90s, I think. And yeah, I mean they just yeah. went, they they took the name and run with it. But yeah, you had you know even Roger Coleman was cranking out Smokey bites the dust and all these where he was just refabricating old material, mm -hmm. putting different people in scenes and just saying put Smokey in the title and it'll sell. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of exploitation, have have you ever seen like um and this isn't a Smokey and the Bandit thing, but like uh making county line absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. boy that movie's that's that movie's brutal. something <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the real stuff yeah that's that's coming up pretty soon actually uh that's that's when there's a second one of that too yeah i've never seen the second one yet so. yeah you know it, it's kind of like how i describe i don't know if you're a fan of henry portrait of a serial killer mm -hmm. well you know there's a sequel to that yeah, and the, and the sequel's pretty good if you never saw the first one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you've seen the first one, then you're like, this is a piece of crap, right? Okay. <laughs> and that's kind of how this is too, because uh, the sequel's pretty decent. I mean, it actually got some bigger name actors in it, but that mm -hmm. first one, man, is just whoo, that's yeah, a rough yeah. movie. But uh, yeah. I plan on covering that because that fits right into that that category as well. But that's not what we're here to talk about today, mm. people. We're here. <laughs> I called up Lee. I said, hey, man. Come on the show, and I know it's 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 always going to be something different, right? That's what I love <laughs> about having Mona on because it's not going to be a run of the mill, everybody knows this movie kind of thing, but it's going to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought up the Rift from 1990. Yeah. I'm going to ask, why? <laughs> um, 
Well, well, my first question before I, I answer that, have you ever seen this before? Have you ever done this on a podcast before? I have not. Okay, good, good. Because uh, I, I painstakingly tried to like troll through all of your episodes on Hail Ming and Short <laughs> Bus and everything, and 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 try to like, has he done this? Has he done this? I wanted to find something you hadn't done, and I also wanted to combine it with something that's been on my letterbox watch list right. for the longest time. Cause I had never seen this. I'd heard about it and I was like, okay, I'm going to eventually get to it. it. I heard it had early army in it. It had a bunch of Ray wise in it. It had a bunch of monsters and effects. And it's kind of like the budget deep star six or Leviathan or something like that. You know, I was like, that sounds up my alley. And it sounded perfect for this. Like I could have easily have done this on like short bus with you guys back oh, yeah. in the day too. Yeah. Right. So, and, and I, I kind of thought maybe that's kind of the angle he was going with, with this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it is definitely that kind of flick. It's pretty amazing because you've got a pretty solid cast here. Yeah. But was it needed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not necessarily. Like a lot of these people are uh, TV actors. You, you, I mean, Arlie Ermey's the and Ray Wise are the biggest names there, right? right? And oh, you already oh, know if Ray Wise is in it, you already know who the bad guy is. I mean, that's yeah. just that's his role in life. I mean, and the mo <laughs> and the movie does its best to give it away too. Like it's like there are all these lingering shots on Ray Wise, and he's not necessarily looking sinister, but it's like, why are we spending an extra ten seconds looking at him for some reason? Yeah, he's he's the he's the. Uh, the evil bishop from the alien flicks. I mean, this is this is aliens, right? Like, just, but it is. It's very much aliens. Yeah, yeah. just underwater. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is a, a submarine flick. Uh, I guess we can do a, a synopsis on it real quick. It's pretty straightforward mm -hmm. when you think about it. Uh, it says Siren Two, a submarine under the command of Captain Phillips, <laughs> ventures into a deep sea uh, mission to recover the missing Siren One. Their quest is hindered when the submarine becomes entangled in a patch of toxic toxic seaweed. <laughs> yeah. And it says nearby, uh, Phillips and his crew find an air-filled underwater cavern where the government conducts sin sinister genetic experience experiments. <laughs> yeah, I don't like you. You've got to you've got to really suspend your disbelief for this film because if you know anything about like how far a human body can go underwater, we 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 have we have dived. I think I think the limits around nine hundred feet for a human in a pressurized suit to get down underwater, and the limit for a submarine is about thirty. I think they were accurate with right. the submarine. It was close. About yeah, thirty five hundred feet or whatever the fuck it is. But, um, man, uh. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not? I mean, because yeah. again, it's that thing where I even told my wife, she was walking through and there was a scene where, you know, they sent the guy out and he gets the sample of the seaweed. They send it up. And she puts it, <laughs> she puts it in the aquarium. And I was like, babe, look, I said, that's a piece of bubble wrap that's been yeah. spray painted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone's done popped all the bubbles too. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, they get around it by saying it's mutant seaweed. So, okay, yeah, yeah. we can we can accept that, you know, that's fine. So, the reason you can say okay with all this is when you find out who the director is. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The same guy that gave us... Yeah, we got we got we got Juan Simone here. Juan Simone. I I don't I'm not gonna even try his middle name. I don't, yeah. I'm not Pick here. <laughs> yeah, pick here, Picor. I don't know. But a bit, the guy who gave us pieces and slugs. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. What else do you need, right? Right. From that point, you're like, okay, everything's everything's off the table. I mean, you can, you pretty much can say this movie can go any direction from this point, and it'll mm -hmm. be like, okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I I think he probably got his biggest budget here, right? Like I'm thinking he did. Like it, it looks like the effects and stuff. Like the the budget I found was a million three. Wow. So. So that's probably, probably good for him. Yeah, that's probably his biggest budget he ever had to work with. Right. I'm thinking. Yeah, man, uh, you've got, uh, you know, we talked about a few people in the cast, but uh, like you said, the big ones we're going to talk about is Ray Weiss and uh, mm -hmm. Lee Emery in this. I mean, they they, they kind of run this show. Yeah. Everybody else is very expendable. You 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 already know the story when this is set up. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, Ray Weiss is sitting over there. He's the guy that's kind of seasick in a submarine right 
So you you can already tell he's not he's not anything navy like he's 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 a duck out of water kind of thing, right? Yeah, um, but but I mean our our lead here, yeah, Jack Scalia, like who is he again? Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a t. I looked at his IMDb. He's like mostly a TV actor, right? And one of his latest credits is like Jersey Shore a Shark Attack or <laughs> something that. That's like that. Yeah, like. <laughs> A lot of the people in the cast are actually just like, yeah. heavily, like I said, heavily TV actors that they just yeah. brought on, right? So and this guy kind of has that Mel Gibson late '80s kind of look about him with the, the, feathered, the, the feathered hair, you know. He's got the lethal weapon yeah. Mel Gibson hair, yeah. Yep. And his name is Wick Hayes, so they're trying Wick. to they're trying to give this guy some credibility, <laughs> even though he's a submarine engineer. <laughs> I. Yeah, I guess he's like, you know, he's a he's one of he's one of these uh catch all characters from the eighties where he's he looks like a million bucks, he's an action hero, but he's also super smart. Right. And and uh, and of course he's got a perfect body. He's laying in his bed in the opening scene, surrounded by bottles of J and B scotch. <laughs> so you so you uh, honestly you already know this is not necessarily a, a totally American kind of picture because you know we got the J and B scotch everywhere. Right. Um but yeah, man, like he's just, you know, he's he's given all the like he, the, you're the coolest guy ever, but he doesn't really do anything in the movie. He keep, really don't. He's not that good. Well, frankly. Captain Phillips keeps shutting him down. So every time mm. he pipes up about something, you know, you've got, you know, again, Emery in this. I mean, you know, he's the same character no matter what movie he's in. He's very. um He's very dialed back here, though, right? Like he's he not is. he's he's not doing his Full Metal Jacket Hartman thing, right? Yeah, he he's he's a little more in the pocket with this, but he still says, you know, you're not going to do this in front of my crew. I've got to hold mm-hmm. this crew together, and you know, and that's the right way to go, right? Even though right. even they even have the one argument, and he even tells him at the end, "I appreciate what you did because you saved everybody's life, but don't do it again," right? <laughs> yeah. No, because like early on, he's like, uh, he's like, Wick, you get the hell off my bridge. Stop screwing with this mission. And then, you know, like later on, Wick like saves all their bacon. But he's still like, he's not saying you get on my bridge. He's, he's still like, go back to your quarters. Get out of here. You know, <laughs> but even Tesla, he says, I'm going back to my office. I think you know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can find your way there. I think that's what he does. Yeah, yeah. Something like so. that. But yeah, I mean, you've got it's it's kind of typical run the numbers here, but the big takeaway from this is the incredible amount of showcasing computer graphics of the time, right? Because mm. we're constantly showing, you know, when we're diving down in these caverns and stuff, and it's all drawn out, you know, on a grid. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of a regression at this point, though, right? 1990 computer right. graphics are better than this. Like this yeah. is. Something I'd expect to see in 1980. Yeah, it looks more like uh, the Superman three <laughs> when he oh, like... when he when he's when he's fighting fighting the missiles and it's all computer animated animation. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of on that level. Yeah, um, I mean, I I can think of tons of films that are like early computer graphics that are way better than this. Yes. But this doesn't have to be like. The most of the computer stuff is strictly the radar screen, and right. I mean it's supposed to be utilitarian anyway, right? Like it, you, right. you don't need you don't need sixteen bit graphics or whatever the hell you could get at that point in nineteen ninety. So, right. um, yeah, it's the navy. There's there's budget cuts probably. I don't. And know. that's the that's the 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 guts of this is the, the navy is sending Wick Hayes down here because his first submarine has malfunctioned and been lost. Mm-hmm. And they want to blame him for it instead of blaming the Navy. So they found him a, a patsy and they want him to go down and try to figure out what happened. And yeah, but they've sabotaged all of his stuff, too. And they've reworked the electronics in it. And again, it's the aliens idea or alien of, you know, these people are expendable. There's something down there we're wanting to get instead. Right. Um, Like the the C- CEO guy he meets early yeah. on right is um edward Prudhomme, who was in pieces and don't open till christmas right. uh, stuff like that and just a classic actor who was in all kinds of great stuff before he did like b movies and stuff you know um and yeah they're they're setting him up as a patsy right like they're yeah. they're like we're gonna make him take the fall everyone on the sub hates wick when he goes on because they all blame him for the deaths from the first sub that we see 
as as Wick is like, you know, talking to the CEO because he's recounting, oh, uh, the the first sub went missing, and then they'll cut a shot to like a flashback somehow of like crew members in the first sub being killed. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they doing it this way? <laughs> like, wouldn't it work better if like there was an opening five minute scene in this movie showing all of that? And then right. we cut to Wick, then we cut to the meeting, then we cut to the sub and going underwater. Like, Well, again, we're, we're talking about the director of pieces. So yeah, <laughs> anything can happen. You never know. Yeah. A guy may jump out and start doing karate in the middle of this. Right. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, that's the beauty of of you know the, the guy in charge, but yeah, I mean it's 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 a little scattered, but again the story is the story we've heard it before we've seen mm-hmm. it before, but it's got some pretty cool ideas in it. I mean oh, yeah. this this uh, seaweed that just goes nuts when they finally get it on board, and it just starts growing and just taking over everything in the in the sub itself. And it, it's almost like it's got intelligence in it too, you know? Yeah, because it, it I guess it can like. For some reason, she puts it in her fish tank, which I'm like, I would not do that. I don't think that's a thing a scientist would actually do. But um, it immediately infects her fish. Yeah. And so that's how she discovers it's bad. You know, the the giveaway wasn't the fact that how, how quickly it grows in the fish tank and how it's moving on its own. That That's not a giveaway to anybody on this crew. But, yeah. And I, after that, be I would not be touching this stuff. But right. everyone seems to want to touch the seaweed no matter what, you know. But um, yeah, the giveaway was the fish that flew out of the tank yes. to commit suicide to get away from the stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, but it's got like a so like the genetic experiments I guess they've been doing. It's all centers around the seaweed that can infect creatures and then like just mutate them. So it's right. it's got that Leviathan yeah. sub theme going on because that was all about mutagens on a Russian sub, right? Yep. If I remember correctly, I think that's what the it, it yeah it's Leviathan's it's it. the mut, mutagen, mutagen one. Yeah, Deep Star right. Six is the one where it's like it's a the creature, yeah, giant sea scorpion or something right. from yeah yeah. Yep, that's that's you're right, and that's probably where this movie came from too. It's just well, a knockoff of the aquatic horror stuff at the time. Well, well, it did. Like I think, yeah. I think there's a trivia item. So this is a Dino De Laurentiis production, and basically what he wanted to do, like he did Leviathan, yeah, and then he wanted to make a low budget version of that as well. I guess just to cover all the bases, like order the market, know, yeah. yeah. Let's let's get let's get into the rental stuff with this like really quickly before because, you know, back in the day, um, you would put a movie into theaters and it would take like what, maybe three to six months for it to show up in the rentals, maybe something like that. Whereas here you could have this you could have Leviathan in theaters and then the same time you could have this directly going to VHS. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what you know, I, I just for for. Because somebody wanted me to, not because I wanted to, but I went through mm. all the Carnosaur movies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I I I accept your excuse. Yeah, that that I'm makes a lot to you, of sense. Man, tangent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean that that first movie. I remember when it came out, I felt insulted because mm-hmm. I was actually hyped about it because the cover kind of looked cool. And it was right before Jurassic Park's coming out, so it did the exact same thing. It yeah. hit the VHS market just a few months before you know, Jurassic Park. So it was riding that wave. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, this is what we got. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) but I do see the fun in those. I understand. It's the same thing we're talking about. It's created low budget movie to fill that gap. And come on, man, Dino, Dino was a smart dude. He may not have made the best movies, but uh, I think what was the saying on hell mean? 68% of the time you're going to be blown away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that that sounds right. That sounds right. I mean, yeah. yeah, no, Dino was a hustler. He knew he knew what he was doing. You yeah. know, he he was more he was probably more savvy than like Canon films and stuff like that. Sure. As you know, as far as yeah. that goes. Well, he wasn't going to blow a, a huge budget. I mean, he, he I think he learned that from King Kong, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I'm going to say it still my favorite King Kong, but that's just... I, I I like it a lot. I have a lot of time for that movie. Me too. He's, yeah. But yeah, I think Dino was really good at being able to hit just the right spot with the low budget stuff enough to get it out there and, and be able to say, okay, that's 
on that scale, it's successful. Yeah, and, and he had the money and the resources to screw up and then, you know, reel right. back and, and fix the problems. Like, right. he, he's not like a Roger Corman who had to, like, make a banger every time, pretty much, you know, right. kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, totally different market, too, at that mm-hmm. time. So, but yeah. So, yeah, man, I mean, you know, and <laughs> you talk about this. I mean, it's one thing we talk about the computer graphics, but that little submarine model <laughs> mm. <laughs> that they used. It's like I remember getting that in a, in a box of Captain Crunch when I was a kid. <laughs> it's like the same thing, you know. It's like you put a little baking soda in it and it goes. Mm-hmm. But they, they, they. Uh, I'll, I'll give them credit. Like a lot of this films, uh, I assume you watched this on Tubi, like I did. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so I mean, I don't know if there's any necessarily better version out there. I think this is probably about as look good as it, uh, it's going to look. Um, it's fairly dark. So like. Even though you know in the back of your mind, yes, it's a little toy sub in in a yeah. in a set, right? It still looks pretty good. Like it, it's dark enough that it hides most of its flaws. Um, I, I I think my biggest complaint is that it's also dark when it's starting to have the monsters pop out. It's right. like I'd rather see a little bit more of the monsters. Thanks, yeah. that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, there's one in there that I thought looked, from what I could see, looked really kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But then it kind of gets blasted with a shotgun. You're like, okay, there there went that one. Yeah. It's the one that like like the bits bites the dude's leg off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a cool looking creature, but mm-hmm. you only got to see, and that's the magic of these movies, right? Is you only could see just a part so, of it. Cause, it's the one, uh, it's the one who looked like uh, the Merman from uh, He Man or whatever, uh, yep. whatever his name was. <laughs> yeah, he's got because yep. because he had the he had the thin like ears yeah. or whatever kind of thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so in all these little almost kind of fly larva looking right. things that are everywhere. Yeah. Which, again, is pretty cool because they're just set up to pop out of holes and bite a dude on the face and get him infected. And, I mean, so you got all those things happening, which becomes very entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know, but the the fact that they go down and find this cavern where, you know, the, the government and basically the Navy has been <laughs> making biological weapons in a mm-hmm. cavern under the sea. And I got to I got to think they'd have like, yeah, so all these caves they go through. I got to think, you know, if the government was actually was setting up a lab, like 2,700 feet under the sea or whatever the hell it is, they would have some better facilities there. Like it would be more like the underground facility in Dawn of the Dead or something like right. that, right? Where there's yeah. a lot of actual buildings and stuff. But no, it's just like computer terminals <laughs> stuck in a rock almost, it looks like kind of thing. It's like, where are you getting the power from? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's a, actually a really good question. I didn't even think about that. I mean, there like, was a, it was a huge room full of computers and machines. And it's like, uh, is this running off a of one, 112 off a of generator? I mean, what's going on here? Yeah, what kind of generator did they have down there, man? Like, they must have had a nuclear reactor or something installed in there somewhere because cause they have the uh, they have their uh, DNA change machine or whatever the hell it yeah. is that drags that one girl in and, and that's huge yeah, yeah it's big and again it's like actually that's the picture behind me if you see it there i've got that, right. that sunflower creature behind me there oh man i love that I've, i thought that I've, was cool I've, i'm so surprised that it they you know escaped it or killed it or whatever so so quickly though it's like that that's your final boss and it's we, yeah like, we needed we needed more of that one i thought so too it's like mm, really but, just but they did a great like stop motion with it and mm-hmm. it's it is so cool, and and I do love the, that they do set it up, though. It's like they walk into the cavern, and they don't see it, but everyone watching the movie sees it. And it's like, right. oh, sh- oh, crap, what is that? <laughs> what is that right there? That's that's like Cthulhu or something sitting up on the friggin' right. ceiling, man. Yeah, you expect to see a thing just start crawling down and coming after them, but, you know, yeah, it's well, pretty stationary. But... I mean, if I remade it, I would, yeah. you know, I and I'd still probably do press you know, uh, actual practical physical, effects. Yeah. practical effects and stuff, I would have it come off the ceiling. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah, it looks like, I mean, with the legs sprawled out there, you, you expect this thing to just start going, you know, mm-hmm. coming down after them. But still, visually, it's very cool. Uh, and again, that's that's where these movies deliver. Show me something I haven't seen before. Right. And even though you kind of seen it, it, it's it's that thing of just changing it up just enough to make you go, interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Could have been better, but the idea is there, right? Yeah, and I mean, in the effects in this, as far as that goes, they're really great. It gets really gory. Yeah, it does. Like, um, and I was getting, 
I'm sure you're familiar with Con- Contamination, the uh, Luigi Koji film. I was just about to bring yeah. that up because that was the first movie I've done on, on Doctor Movie. And okay. It's because I talked about, I think whoever decided to make that movie had seen the poster for Alien, but never really saw Alien. Right. <laughs> Right. And just made a movie based off that poster, right? Yeah. Lu- <laughs> yeah, Luigi Cozy in typical Italian Italian exploitation uh, fashion just yes, alien, I know what that is, and then <laughs> and then made something totally different. And and in this movie I I got a I got a feeling that uh there was some influence there because you got the oh, white yeah. suits with the gas the you know the face masks Absolutely. and then you have exploding squibs. Yep. The, the the one guy who gets his head, you know, she does the mercy kill on the dude and blows yep. his head open. And it's like, OK, yeah, this is this is contamination. Right. Here. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, and I <laughs> you bringing that up, I, I just covered it'll come out probably in a couple of weeks. I, I'm a few weeks ahead on the show. That's what I like about this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did a cannibal apocalypse. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and I'm basically going when you want to make Dawn of the Dead. But you can't do the makeup effects for the Dawn of the Dead, so you just make them all have rabies? Yeah. There you go. That's what this yeah. movie is. <laughs> They're dressed just like people in Dawn of the Dead. They're playing the exact same music from Dawn of the Dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, the that's the Bruno Matai one. Yeah, that's Matai. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know it is. Um, but what's the name I know it by? It's not Cannibal Apocalypse that I know it by. It's... Um... There, yeah, this got several names. Yeah, but but yeah, that one's shameless because you know Bruno <laughs> Bruno Matai, and I mean our our friend Court Syops can attest to this one. Oh yeah, where he is just he is the trashiest of the trash meisters. Where absolutely he was just making he was just making this crap, and you know some of it's actually pretty good. Um and yeah, he was just ripping off Dawn of the Dead and that so hardcore oh, that it's just like yeah. I'm just gonna steal Goblin's music. Yeah. Yeah, Le- I mean, literally the same uh-huh. music from Dawn of the Dead, same cues. I remember when I was listening, I was like, man, this sounds like Dawn of the Dead. And I was like, this is Dawn of the Dead. Yes. <laughs> and I just I just love how, you know, conveniently the, the, the SWAT team in that movie, it's like, oh, I've discovered to kill the zombies. We're going to shoot them in the head. Shoot and then the head. <laughs> three seconds later, they all forget and they just keep <laughs> shooting the body. It's like, OK. Yeah, I, I talk about there's one guy that looks like a like a 1981 Lars Ulrich running around going, no, you got to shoot him in the head like yep. this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, anyways, we need to get back to this one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, be looking for that one, folks. And but uh, yeah, that's what I love about these movies, man, because even though they are kind of ripping things off, they're going to put their own spin on on it. And there's something fascinating about it, because eventually you kind of take an idea that they had, mm-hmm. that you know, that they kind of ripped off, and we take it and we make it into something here too. So, you know, it's funny how you just kind of see that repeat. I, I brought that up in contamination. What was it? There was something that I said that we kind of took from them. Oh, it's the it was the the flamethrower. Okay. Cooking yeah, the yeah. eggs because it, it was before Aliens too. Well, mm-hmm. what did they do in Aliens too? Right. Yeah, yeah. So. And I mean. When you look at the sort of structure of this and just how it's kind of filmed and everything, this is very much like those sci-fi monster movies from, yes. you know, from the sci-fi network. It's just better effects and better acted. Yep. yep. But I mean, this is the kind of thing they churn out like on a like a seemingly <laughs> weekly basis. They just get a bunch of actors that either no one's heard of or they've fallen down to like D-list status. And then they have them, you know, act around cgi effects that they can't see right <laughs> at least these people are like acting around squibs and exploding monsters and right. stuff like that right and then outside the ship you've got almost going back to fantastic voyage or any of your mm. you know, movies like that where you've got the the miniatures but you know here's the submarine and it's and it's being attacked by something and ends up being a, just a big glob of i don't know vanilla yeah. pudding or <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say kaiju jellyfish, you know, try to give it some credit, but it didn't have pudding. an eyeball. It didn't yeah, have it an did. eyeball. Yeah, it did, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you get that kind of thing going on where that really goes back, harkens back to those days of, you know, uh, hundred thousand leagues under the sea, all those movies that had that kind of stuff going on. So yeah, yeah, you know, so in a way you can kind of appreciate it. It's dated from a '90s aspect, but they're not doing anything different. There wasn't, you know. Everybody loved that stuff back in the day, man. Oh, Fantastic no, you, Voyage, I still love. Yeah, no, all the all these effects are like 
the stuff they've been using for the last 40 years up to that point, basically. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, and this is just before Jurassic park kind of changes the entire game. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, it's, it's a fun flick, man. Uh, mm-hmm. I like, uh, I like the, uh, uh, Joe Kane character too. You know, <laughs> he's, he's got the thing where he's got the binoculars or whatever. He's got the, the, the magnifying yeah. glasses on. He's looking yeah. at the girl over there that's reaching up to get something. He's like, yeah, that's it right there, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't, they, they don't let him perv out enough in the film. He, he, he's, he spends too much time, like, you know, talking about the white man and, uh, you know, <laughs> you're the kind of white man I like, Wick. <laughs> You know, oh, and he's the only one that goes. I think we ought to go out of here and let <laughs> somebody else come down here and take care of this. He says yeah. it twice. No, he <laughs> even like, yeah, he knowingly says, "Oh yeah, send the black man out first. You can make me go in the boat first or whatever." You know, like yeah, okay. Like he knows, he knows what movies in man. He uh, knows. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's. I thought I thought it was a fun flick, man. I mean, mm-hmm. and again, you can see the shortcuts, right? You can see the shortcuts oh, yeah. in it. But I think, again, because, you know, talking about the people that are in this, they pull it off enough that you kind of go, all right, this is this is an okay flick. Yeah. And, again, yeah. With the fight scene at the end, when they Good. get Ray Rice down and he rubs his face. Oh, yeah. On badass. that little guy's face that's got the seaweed on it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's badass stuff. That was pretty You cool. know, Irby gets to do a little bit of cool crap you know and it's just yeah. like and then he even sacrifices himself right because right. it's like i'm a, he puts his arm i'm already I, infected I man right yeah. yeah yeah you know what fun fun flick man and yeah. you, you really I, again like i said I, I knew you were gonna bring something different to the show and that's why i always like working with you but you you never you never cease to to amaze with you know, what you kind of <laughs> pulled out of there i thought maybe you know uh of course ray weiss has been in everything mm-hmm. <laughs> And, you know? and I'm and I mean, you know, immediately you go to Twin Peaks is, is what yes. most people think of. But, yeah, I mean, I, I was surprised to see him in this because I honestly didn't do much research. I just like I heard this movie. It sounds really cool. Put it on my letterbox watch list. And then you you uh, contact me. Pick a movie. I was like, OK, yeah. I'm going right to my watch list. Let's do this one. Let's get it. I think it's actually was the first thing on my watch list. So it's like I, awesome. maybe I should clear clean this off. It's been on there for like five years. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome, man. Uh, well, normally I do the 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 standard kind of rating thing on this too. It's a one through five, right? Mm-hmm. Five being best, one being a zero. What do you rate this movie, man? Um, I was I was originally gonna go a three, but like talking about it just made me enjoy it a bit more. So I'm gonna sit at a four with this one. Yeah. You know, like it it does have some little flaws here and there. It, it you. There's there's a little bit of rough edges to it, but it's highly enjoyable. It's got great effects in it. It's fun. It breezes along real quick. It's only like 80 minutes. Yeah, it's short. Yeah, and and it, if you're looking for like just a trashy kind of rip off, like honestly, it's kind of the trashy rip off of not even Leviathan. It's kind of like the trashy version of Deep Star Six, which is the <laughs> trashy version of Leviathan. Right. So if you want to go down even a couple more pegs, um, this is a lot of fun. So four out of five for me. Yeah. You know, that's kind of where it is for me too. It's, yeah. it's a four. It's uh, you know, it, it's enjoyable enough that there's actual scenes here that you could actually share with people go check this out. Yeah. You know, don't check this part out, but check this part out. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like, I was never bored anytime I right. watched this. Right. Cause uh, like I said, this is kind of the template for like the, the sort of sci-fi channel movies you see these days that are, yeah. And most of them are so boring, unless oh, they have like a bunch of bikini girls running around, which they yeah. rarely do anymore. It's like, okay, why am I watching this? Why am I watching piranha conda shark versus yeah. whale wolf octopi? No, I don't need that. <laughs> I need this movie where we get like 10 minutes in and people are already getting infected by seaweed and like dying. And then we got the whole cave sequence and it's like, everyone starts dropping dead real quick. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, this movie rocks. And it, it's very efficiently just gets to the point and doesn't like linger on a bunch of crap. It doesn't make you sit there and think about too much. Like, man, this submarine's way bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it, it comes down to, if you like, I don't know, let's say uh, uh, 
the the creatures that are in Big Trouble in Little China. Oh yeah, That's there's some creatures that are very similar in this that you kind of see roaming, roaming around in this movie, which I kind of dig, right? Mm -hmm. And how about and the first thing I thought of, well, two things I thought of when when the diver goes out, Sven goes out to get the seaweed right. and the black box, right? The mm -hmm. mysterious black box, and uh, he goes down there and there's a body floating around, right? And it's like, wow, that's straight out of Big Trouble in Little China or uh, Inferno. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Infer yeah, you're right. And also, very weirdly, he doesn't seem to, like, he gets <laughs> over it real quick. And then no one else seems to care. It's like, you found one of the crew floating <laughs> dead in the water. Maybe you should bring, bring his body on to study or something. Like, because he's got, he's got, like, tentacles and stuff, like, right. coming out of his face and his... Oh no, we'll forget about that. Get more seaweed. Let's let's do and that. And you you get a flash of like this humongous octopus. Mm -hmm. Never again. It's, it's just there no. for a couple of seconds, and then you get the the jello fish, the pudding fish, or whatever that thing was. <laughs> yeah. So it's again, it's it's got its issues, but it's fun enough. Again, yeah. it, it's kind of what Lee was saying. If if you like, you know, low budget but entertaining flicks. This is a good one. It really surprised me. Yeah, same here. I was I was watching this tonight and I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, I picked something good. That's good. <laughs> We're not Ricky and I are not going to sit here for like twenty minutes trying to come up with something to say about this piece of crap. It's actually entertaining. So yeah, I was uh, like, oh I'm, no, yeah, I knew, I kind of knew. I was like, oh, if Ricky hasn't seen this, he's going to like it. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I never doubted it, man. I, again, I, we we kind of got that extra sense. We kind of know <laughs> what ballpark we're both in, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, short bus was you know trying to find the worst crap you can watch. So if we can make that fun, we can make anything fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can make it through Battlefield Earth and have oh. a show talking about it, then you know yeah. anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on. It's always a blast getting together with you, man. I hope we can do this some more. Uh, oh, yeah. With this show, I've got a lot more freedom that I can do these kind of things where it just kind of I can kind of do whatever I want, kind of like that. But uh, man, take a little time. I, I know you've got the torchies thing going on too. Let everybody know what shows you got it on. What's what you know? Do your spiel. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, and yeah, it was great to to get back to talk with you too. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, my main podcast is They Must Be Destroyed on Site. Uh, you can go to tmbdos.podbean.com to find that. And basically, like we were talking about, I we we team we sort of you know tend to cover a little bit of everything. We do kind of like lean towards cult and exploitation and obscure and stuff like that. But you know, we 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 do do a little bit of everything. We even do like musicals and modern films and you know whatever sort of tickles our fancy. It's just like, hey, let's do this this week. Okay, we'll do it. That's, that's what our show is, and uh, it has a sub podcast called Blood on the Tracks that yeah. where I cover uh, movie soundtracks and scores that I like. So uh, that's also fun. Uh, the other thing that we mentioned it is on Legion podcasts, like you're listening to right now. And if you're paying for the Patreon, you lucky dogs, you get more of it. <laughs> uh, Last Call of Torchies, where uh, Gary Hill from Cinema Beef and uh, Cameron Scott from uh, Cinema Degeneration. I think I got that right. Yep. That's yeah. I, yeah. I didn't fuck that up. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Cameron. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we cover uh, Walter Hill's uh, films. We're, we're, we've been going through his filmography one film at a time. Uh, we have gotten up to another 48 hours, which is coming out fairly soon. And what we do with the Patreon uh, if you if you join the Legion Patreon, you get a bonus episode with every episode that we do that we sort of like, hey, we pair a film that's similar to the film we're covering from Walter Hill's filmography. So we did another 48 hours on the main feed, Patreon feed. You're going to get the nice guys with uh, Russell Crowe and, um, yeah. and what's his name? Uh, 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 dude from Drive. I'm, I'm totally uh. blanking on his name. Pretty boy. <laughs> uh, what is it? I can't even Ryan Gosling. There you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's that's what we that's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> Which is awesome, by the way. Mm, thank you. <laughs> I mean with Hill, man, I mean, God. I mean what what a what a list of movies, man. Yeah, uh, and we're in 
it's it's been fun too because I I only had like a few Walter Hill films under my belt that I had actually seen, and as we get further into his career, I've seen even less. So we're we're getting up to you know Ooh. like kind of midpoint of his career now where it's like I haven't seen a lot of this stuff and a lot of it has been really really good. So I'm like, yeah. oh man, this is awesome. We get to talk about really fun films so my yeah. my good friend shannon story his favorite movie of pretty much all time is streets of fire oh yeah so yeah. you know he's he's a big fan of that movie so he'll he'll be glad to hear his name shouted out anytime that you know i have to bring that up he had to had to throw his name in there there you go <laughs> and, and he and he picked a good favorite too that's a oh, great yeah, film it's a great yeah. one yeah yeah i kind of lean more towards probably still warriors you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 a Warriors and uh, you know Southern Comfort kind of guy. Oh, and, Southern Comfort's awesome. Yeah, mm, but then then we get we were getting to the late '80s and it's like okay, you know Walter Hill's doing a couple of uh, more mainstream films, but then he does something like Extreme Prejudice, which is like the A Team and the Wild Bunch all mixed together. I'm like, right. holy crap, this is awesome! Why have I never seen this before? <laughs> yeah, Long Riders. Long Riders is great. Yeah. Who doesn't know Crossroads, right? Yeah, Cross, Ralph Crossroads. Macchio, fighting Steve That's, I. <laughs> yeah. Crossroads, I, I, I kind of like everything in that but Ralph Macchio. But <laughs> I'm not a big Ralph Macchio it. fan, but, you know, he doesn't need he doesn't need to be the main character because you got, like, a bunch of supporting cast in that one that's really good. Yep. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, cool, man. I don't hold you up anymore. I appreciate you coming on, man. Always a pleasure. I always say I have to say this real quick too because Lee was obviously early supporter of Helming too, and he even he even sent us a song once. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got a friend in Ming. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. So that kind of shows you right there that you know uh, we we try to support each other as any way we can and have fun with it and you know it's 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 great to have a, a an association with all these people that. This is the only way we're going to really meet, right? Yeah, you're 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 not even in the states, so. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm on the edge of Atlant uh, of the Atlantic Ocean, about right. to fall off, you know. So. <laughs> but that's the beauty of being able to do this and get to know people and still see that, regardless of where we are, we still have a love for these same bad movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, folks, that's gonna be it for us. Lee, again, appreciate you coming on, brother. Oh, man, it was, it's always a pleasure to talk with you, and uh, uh, thank you for inviting me. It was great. Right, and everybody, again, stop what you're doing. Even stop this show. Go check out They Must Be Destroyed on Site. I demand you do that. You're going to enjoy it. <laughs> um, You heard the man. Do it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, we will check you later. Adios. Bye. <laughs>